If you lived in California in the 70s or 80s, there is a good chance you've heard of the Golden State Killer. His real name is Joseph D'Angelo, and he committed at least 13 murders, 50 rapes, and more than 100 burglaries, all from 1974 to 1986. But it took three decades to catch this serial killer. And last year, police made the shocking announcement that a 72-year-old Navy veteran and former police officer was their Golden State Killer. This bombshell news likely not possible without the hard work work of one investigator. That investigator joins us now in studio. Paul Holes, welcome yeah, to buddy. BBL. Honestly, so honored to have you here. Now, Paul, you may be retired, but not really, because you do have a new, uh, a new true crime show on Oxygen called The DNA of Murder, where you help local police investigate cold cases. So speaking of DNA, tell us how your work with DNA helped lead to uh, catching the Golden State Killer. Well, with the Golden State Killer, this was a case that I was on for 24 years, wow. and I got involved in that because of DNA back in 1994 and just kept on trying to see what I could do with it and then just stumbled across this new kind of genealogy tool and me and a small group of individuals we partnered with the FBI and ultimately that tool led us to Joseph D'Angelo so that is how we caught Are him. you shocked me knowing this is an army veteran this is like a or naval like were you shocked by that what what shocked me the most was he used to be a police officer right and you know in hindsight and taking a look at what he was doing you go he had law enforcement training but I just kind of took the position hey he's an intelligent offender he doesn't want to get caught he's going to learn those tactics then when he gets caught, it's like, oh. Jeez. he went to the police academy. He was trained. He knew exactly what he needed to do in order to commit these crimes. Terrifying. What do you think the obsession is with true crimes? Because even me, I love 48 hours. I would love yep. to do what you did and helped catch killers like that. What do you think America's obsession is with that? Well, I just go back to myself, because even before I got into law enforcement, I was obsessed with reading about true crime. You know, so for me, it was just a natural progression of just following my interests, following my, my passion. And it's it's the there's the story aspect. Often these crimes are stranger than than fiction. But then there's also just trying to understand why do people commit these types of crimes? Trying to get into the psychology of these offenders, which I think is fascinating. Have you learned anything to that to that note? Any psychology that that shocked you? Any pattern of behavior other than them being psycho in my mind? Like well, I think you know for the types of cases that I went after, I purposely go after cases that appear to be pre predatory in nature. These are offenders that have an inner drive. They have a fantasy life about committing this violence. And to me, the shocking aspect is, is that what they've done is they, they have taken a, a very active fantasy life of violence and have taken the step to actually inflict that violence on other people. And they enjoy that. That's what they feel oh. compelled to do. That's what's shocking. It's, it's really getting down to a core base human element of who they are. Wow. Is there any characteristic or trait that's like, okay, I can spot one by this that they're doing? No, you know, and that's, I think that's the important thing is, is that when you take a look at the, the known serial predators out there, they run the gamut of personalities. There isn't one particular trait, you know, there's, of course, uh, Ted Bundy got a lot of press recently, and there's a lot of criticism about some of the shows, uh, you know, kind of portraying this good looking, charming guy. Well, the reality is, is that some of these serial predators are like that. You have to understand that they don't look like the boogeyman, but at the same time, sometimes they do look like the boogeyman and, and act like the boogeyman. So it really runs the gamut. And you're super popular. There's an entire hashtag <laughs> that is talking about yeah. this. Yeah. Hot for holes. You know about this, right? I, I know. I've heard. I've heard a little bit tell about it. Tell our audience, it. in case our audience doesn't so know. Tell our audience. Basically, after a press conference last year, you went viral and you became the internet's uh, unofficial true crime boyfriend. So how has your life changed since this happened? Oh, gee. You know, I, I am aware that that's out there. I try not to Hot pay attention holes. to it. <laughs> so, but you know, it's interesting. It's very flattering. Uh, but right now, you know, like with DNA of murder, I am just focused on trying to help law enforcement solve some of these unsolved cases. And I understand you guys, this DBL True Crime Chronicles, you have something <laughs> yeah. like that. We have our own 
numbers. Right? Yeah. Are you sliding into our territory? Well, I don't know. So, don't know. so you solve a case in two and a half minutes? Is that how that works? <laughs> That's how we do it here. Okay. Yeah, well, it only took it me 24 years, so you guys are really on it. <laughs> but you got to get back and help us out in case we can't solve one of I those. Know. Anytime. I'd love to. What does to. it feel like really quickly when, when, when you solve a case? You, you, I, well, obviously, you know, when the Golden State Killer case, when I get the phone call that the DNA came back and it was that matched what we had. D'Angelo matched the Golden State Killer's DNA. There's just that almost a blank feeling of finally that's there. Because of the amount of work, that's just the beginning. Now it's an interview process. Now it's writing warrants. There's all sorts of legwork that has to be done. About two months after that was when I first was able to finally just relax, and I had a picture of D'Angelo up on my computer screen wow. and a little bit of, uh, of an alcoholic beverage with me, and I finally just sat back and was like, did it. Wow. Gotcha. gotcha. Well done. Yep. Well done. So nice to have you here. Uh, thank you. Uh, let me just get this really quickly. The DNA of murder on oxygen.